In the spring and summer of 2022, National Urban League and Unidos U.S., along with partners, conducted over 60 interviews and focus groups with 260 people across various stakeholder groups. This animation contains actual quotes from individuals who participated in focus groups and interviews. The last 20 years, academic achievement gaps and learning opportunities have remained stagnant for black and brown students. Accountability systems were built on the foundation of a basic premise that schools and districts will be held responsible for raising student achievement and making continuous improvement. States and districts use funding to hire administrators, teachers, school support staff, purchase books, enhance technology, pay for after-school programs, infuse social and emotional learning, and implement a range of academic enrichment and intervention programs. The goal is for all students to perform at least on grade level and that all schools meet the needs of their students. But how do you measure the quality of all of the things you spend money on to ensure that all students are well-educated? Today's Town Hall takes a deep dive into this very topic, starting now. Welcome to our Town Hall meeting. I will be your moderator, and today's topic is the utility of the accountability system. We will discuss how useful you think the accountability systems are. Do they help schools by targeting resources and promoting improvement? Do they hurt schools by lowering morale like a scarlet letter? If you rated a school D or an F for performance in 2019, and that school showed the same performance in 2022, and you rate that school a C, there's some inequity there. Clearly, when it comes down to our underperforming campuses where students of color are being subjected to practices that are inequitable, that do not serve them. In areas like that, if you are basically carving the score, who are you really serving? Are you serving the politician? Because it's definitely not serving the community, and it's not serving the students, and it's not serving the teachers. But I also wonder if, shouldn't we be valuing other measures in high school like students taking dual enrollment courses, getting college credit, and being truly ready for the next step? We value those, but in our current accountability system, we can't give them too much weight. We give them a little bit of weight. Schools are a part of communities, so should the community determine how these factors are weighted in a school's accountability system? For example, in the accountability system, how much weight should we put on students' performance versus their growth or progress toward proficiency? If we're talking about school report cards, whether you assign letters or stars, it doesn't really matter. What does that mean when we talk about growth? If we want to say growth is important to show we got from 1 to 10, even though the school might already be at a 10, they only went from a 9 to a 10. How is that going to matter in the future by sharing that accountability data in a way that all parents, regardless of languages or whether you've ever worked in education, can understand? Under the Every Student Succeeds Act, states are challenged to draw on lessons learned from the last 15 years and to refine their accountability systems to provide pressure and support in order to maintain high standards. Where do you stand on this issue? Depending on where your school ranks, then people go, okay, well my school is good or my school is bad. I need to move elsewhere. You've got to involve the whole community and be very transparent, especially in this political environment, about what it all really means. What are we doing with this data? I feel like instead of just thinking about accountability from a Hammer perspective, there are lots of things around focusing and supporting schools in implementing evidence-based strategies. School leadership, I know there are other questions that get to this, but it felt like it was going right to a viewing accountability as a nuclear kind of solution and a hammer when we've worked hard not to have it be viewed as that. A hammer can be utilized to build up or destroy. That's right. 
and there is a certain level of accountability that you cannot escape the fact that there is that high stakes, high pressure aspect to it, which you can't take away. But there's also a lot of good data that it generates that actually should be used as a mirror to reflect and make change. From the data that has emerged, parents, educational advocates, and community leaders want to know why black and brown students are still faltering under this system. Why hasn't the educational playing field truly been leveled for all students, regardless of race, economic status, or native language? What is at the root of these seemingly biased inequities? Accountability has been a scripted curriculum for state and local decision makers that has backfired because that's not actually how it works. Like we got so caught up on what is the relationship and the weights between the various factors and accountability system that we lost sight of who is making a decision about where the community garden goes and where the community garden doesn't go. Who is making the decision about school start times and bus routes? and who gets recess, and where you recruit for new teachers, and all of those pieces that have a direct effect on students' day-to-day -day experience in school. The question is, how do we ensure that accountability systems measure everything that impacts student achievement and reward growth? It's not simply about the money. You can give a school funds. What's to say that this school is now going to do better because they have funds? Well, they might obviously have more money than before, but they still had funds that they were using, and they weren't allocating it properly. I think that throwing money at things doesn't make improvements. It helps. I certainly don't minimize that part. But just to throw spaghetti at a wall, that concerns me. Depending on who our governor is, determines a lot of what happens obviously in the Department of Education. We had a governor in the past that used to issue report cards. Every school had a report card, A to F, and that would be publicized, and that was very damaging for teachers and their sense of competency, and there are a lot of factors that would go into that report card. Is that still going on? We've gone away from that, but prior to that there was a system in place for us where I did start to see improvements that those schools that were underperforming were getting help to make those improvements. That's where I saw things making a difference. It was focused. It had intent. There was a beginning and some benchmarks along the way and a goal to where they needed to get. But I think the question on the table is how necessary is it to have school accountability to accomplish what we need in this country to educate our students? Are we at the point where how we have designed this accountability system is really not supporting improvement because we all know very well that regardless of the growth data, that the achievement data is pretty flat across the country? Hmm, there is growth, but achievement data is flat. Wow. I wish we had more time to discuss this, but I'm afraid our time is up. Thank you to everyone who participated. I'm sure everyone learned a lot today. I know that I did. See you at the next town hall. It is abundantly clear from today's town hall that all students, parents, advocates, educators, and policymakers must take part in defining this new accountability system in order for all students, especially our black and brown students, to achieve their full potential.